Your Excellency, Hoda. Nice to meet you. Hoda so, will bring you off the stage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a, I will just do a welcome, a small film, and then she will pull you to the stage. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Shall we start? Yeah, shall we start? Okay. Elsa, shall we start? Okay. Whenever you're ready. Oh, okay, from Alpha. Shall we start? Yes, we start. Well, uh, hello everyone, welcome. My name is Huda Ayari from CAPJC, the African Center for Training Journalists and Communicators. Uh, today I'm, I am honored to host the presentation of Storymaker, a very interesting project that we as CAPJC will soon uh, be involved in, maybe uh, later this year. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome Leon Williams uh, to the stage to say a few words. Welcome. Marhaba, masal khair. Bienvenue, chers amis. A very warm welcome on behalf of Free Press Unlimited to this uh, great event and uh, the iFreedom Conference in Tunis. A special welcome to His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands, Mr. Frans Timmermans, and also to all the delegates 
from the country representatives. And of course, the Internet Freedom Friends, the international NGOs involved in the Internet community, dear friends and colleagues. So, um, I'm really honored to present to you one of the greatest projects that we've been involved in lately. Um, it is in, intended to provide a more professional, more secure, and a more open environment by allowing your mobile phone to become like a reporting center for all the news stories. And I'm now going to uh, call the launch of Storymaker. We increasingly see images and videos captured by mobile devices penetrating the mainstream media. The stuffing of ballot boxes by Sudanese officials, the death of Gaddafi, and the molestation of opposition leader in Uganda. These are all images that were brought to us via the mobile phone. You're talking about an HD camera, an editing station, a broadcasting tool, and now it all fits in the palm of your hand. The images are there, because there are always mobile phones at the scene. But now we want to include citizens' perspectives on the news. And to do that, we want to improve the quality of the content we can share the world. What Storymaker does is helps you, the user, take better control of the great capacities of your mobile phone. Storymaker contains two things. On the one hand, it has lessons in journalism, security, audio, photo, and video to enable people to be safe and do good journalism. On the other hand, it has a whole editing suite enabling people to capture images, edit them, and upload them safely and securely from their mobile phone. Regular people every day who've been living it their entire life can now tell us why they're trying to overthrow Assad, why they need better support for droughts, what we can do to stop the epidemic of AIDS in our community. Story makers are especially relevant for people who are living and working in areas that are not receiving objective news coverage. So they can bring their stories that are relevant to them to a global audience. We have the power, and now it's time to take responsibility for ourselves and tell our own stories and make a difference. Well, that was great. Uh, Storymaker wouldn't have been possible. that Storymaker wouldn't have been possible without the crucial support of the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I'd like to seize the opportunity to welcome very warmly Your Excellency, Mr. Franz Timmersman. Please come to the stage. Hello. Hi. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask you about your impression of Storymaker project. I think this could be great. I think this could add um, a new flavor to all these people we're now filming things as they happen. Um, today in Turkey, um, wherever something happens and people get, um, want to share it with the rest of the world, they use their mobile phones. If they can edit their films, if they can add their comments, their own perspectives, it gets such a great boost. I think more people will want to follow it. Yes, indeed. Um, why has the ministry supported uh, Storymaker? Well, precisely for this reason, because we see that people all across the world want to live in a free society. But unfortunately, we don't have free societies all over the world. And we've seen in the last couple of years that the interaction between people across borders via the internet can create a dynamic that can bring freedom to countries. Tunisia is a case in point uh, where you could see, I wonder whether um, um, the horrible plight of uh, Mohammed Bouazizi would have been known worldwide without mobile phones, filming things without the internet, uh, etc. So I think this is such a powerful tool for human rights. We need to enhance it. Yes. Uh, what do you hope will achieve the Storymaker project? Well, I, I, I hope it will achieve that authorities worldwide, where they think they can still control public opinion, where they still can think they, control, they can control information, they come to see that it's better to let information flows flow freely and to reform their states, to have citizens who are free, 
who can make up their own minds on the basis of what they see, because there is no way even the most powerful, oppressive regime can stop the flow of information if tools such as these are applied worldwide. Well, this is great for people using social media worldwide. Are you personally active in the social media sphere? Yep, yep. I use Facebook, so people join me on Facebook. I've got a fan page, so you can, you can like it. And what I, what I like about this is that my page is not, it's only slightly about policy. It's a lot about what is it that Minister Foreign Affairs does all, all day, every day? Where is he? What are, what are the, who are the people he meets? What are the subjects he, he wants to, to talk about? Um, when does he see his kids? Uh, what does he do? Yesterday I was at a rock festival in, in, in the Netherlands, Big Bob, uh, which is still going on today, by the way. You can see it online if you wish. Um, so it, it just shows people what a person like myself does all day, and it, I think it's a, it's a way of of only just slightly enhancing the democratic nature of governments. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank My you. pleasure. Well, I, I think obviously the transformation of media in the Middle East due to the recent uprisings and the proliferation of internet and mobile uh, phones make it uh, the best area to invest in. And uh, we've seen scores of bloggers, people who load uh, information up to the internet, and we felt that by adding professionalization, explaining people about journalism values, giving lessons and adding um, a tool would create the possibility for bloggers and activists to change from being from making stories by just holding the phone and and you know being present at an event and create stories. And so we decided um, with the help of the ministry to start this project in Iraq, Morocco, Tunisia and Egypt um, as the first target countries. How do you think you can accelerate the use of StoryMaker? Well, one of the fascinating aspects of the new uh, digital world is that StoryMaker has been soft launched uh, a little bit earlier on Google Play. And in the last 30 days, already 5,000 people downloaded StoryMaker uh, without us making any publicity for it. So it shows that there is a drastic need for these kind of tools to improve the quality of citizen journalism to make the content that's, that the critical content that citizen journalists contribute to the world um, be easier adopted by uh, uh, mainstream media. And last but not least, I'm here announcing that Free Press Unlimited will award the best story contributed to Storymaker this year until the 31st of December with 1,000 euro and because Storymaker is a project that lives by the critical comments of the community itself, we offer another thousand euros to persons who contribute the best bug report. Because Storymaker is a joint effort, it's created by a whole range of people together. We are now training almost 600 trainers in these four Arabic countries. We expect a lot of feedback from these people, also critical feedback, that will uh, you know, improve the application. And so anyone who comes with good improvements, we offer another thousand euros. Well, that is something, I guess. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'd like to ask you to stay in the room to join us in a more in-depth story maker and a showcase presentation by Free Press Unlimited. Thank you all and enjoy.
You're still here. That means you are really interested, and you're not just here for the political interest. That's really good, right? So now we're going to into some real story making. That's what we're doing. That's what we're about. So Elsa, can you give me the next slide? So I'm going to tell you a bit about this Creative Commons open source app, where I would really like you to be part of. So the uh, the concept is that more and more people want power. People want information. People want to determine what their, their society looks like, and they want to be part of the conversation. In 1926, Bertolt Brecht, a German playwright, said, the potential of radio can only be fulfilled if the listener can talk back. Well, right now, that's the case. You had your revolutions here, in Egypt, in the Middle East, but it's not stopping. Even right now, people are resisting power in Turkey, in Istanbul, in Gezi Park. And later on, we'll have a few story maker movies from you that we made this week in Gezi Park. So, why is this so cool and so important? With broadcast media and state-owned media, the network is very centralized. There's one point of information that beams to all other nodes. When you have an independent media with media institutions, you have a decentralized network, which is already stronger because here it's an only one node needs to fail for all information to fail, but here people have more chance to continue if one or two nodes fall. But if you look at a distributed net, then you see information cannot be stopped. It can all be routed to all people, and this means that you are not only a consumer of news, but you're also a producer of news. It means there's a public debate. So this completely turns the news media upside down, and that's a good thing, because that's what we need. And that's also what's happening, because the earning models of traditional media are broken. But we all know as well that social media can help us get uh, break shackles, but as every technology that is adding something, it's also breaking something. And you all know that privacy, and especially what came out last week with, the, the, with PRISM, governments are looking at us. And our, tele our telephones that are enabling us to shoot videos can also be used to spy on us. So how do we balance that out? Thank you. <laughs> You're doing a better job. <laughs> so, with mobile phones being available everywhere, Elsa, next slide. <laughs> doing this for you people. From Afghanistan to, uh, uh, to the Arab world, we were thinking, how can we train these people? Because we, as a media development organization, are used to going to a media outlet, sitting journalists down, and working with them on training. If we do the same with bloggers, we sit them down in one room, we'll have one day of discussion about what we will do and what political standpoints we all should have. And that's a good thing, right? But that makes training far more difficult. And furthermore, it can even be dangerous to, all of the, to put all these critical voices in one room, because you're making it an easy target. So we needed a way of decentralized training. And we've been looking at at, at e-learning and m-learning. So who of you has ever done an online course? Okay, and I'm going to ask you a question of conscience. How many of you did finish it? <laughs> well, you're a good audience because, because uh, the rate of people finishing it is about 3%. So 
we thought we can make a good curriculum, which we did. I'll talk a bit more about it later. Teaching people in journalism, digital security, making photos, videos, and audio pieces. But if we're just making a digital manual, people will maybe have a look at it once. But you know how it goes. There are movies to be watched, people to be seen, people to be chatted with. We need to tweet a bit, maybe not look at the manual. So how are we going to drag people back into the manual? Well, we do that by connecting the, uh, the manual with a tool that you will want to use. And while you're using the tool, you might come back to the manual. Smart, eh? <laughs> so if we want to liberate our information, and if we want to use information the way we need it, we need to break out of the, of the walls that, uh, are, that organizations like Google, Facebook, LinkedIn are building. Because they want to centralize and monopolize our data, whereas the data is ours. And we should keep it on our phones and under our control. So, no, oh, back please. Because the most important aspect, and I actually should have put it completely up, the whole app and everything we do is licensed under an open source license and a Creative Commons license. What does this mean? If you don't like the, my training curriculum, make your own. And, or add stuff to it and we can update it into the main branch. If you think our security is not good enough or our implementation of Tor is not good enough, take our code, make it better, criticize us. That's what we need and that's the only way we can get better. So we have, uh, we have all the wiki and have all the code is on Git and you can file bug reports and feature requests, but I know it may not be the hobby of many of you to do that. So you can simply uh, send your bugs and ideas to support at storymaker.cc and we'll get back to you very soon. And if you do this, you have a chance of winning 1,000 euros. So, you know, next I'm motivator. So, of course, we do not want to do this alone because we cannot solve this alone. Mobile journalism is not done, it's not developed yet. We don't know how it works, so we can only work together. So with the funding from the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Radio Free Asia, with a group of organizations we started working and coding and preparing the curriculum, the Guardian Project, the heroes of uh, secure, Android, uh, secure Android coding, uh, the people from Small World News and ICFJ who have a lot of uh, knowledge about journalism training, and us who think who do everything also. <laughs> and then, we're going to, uh, we did not want to push out a tool into the world and say, everyone, just use it. That's why we're implementing it with the world's biggest uh, blogger network, that you probably all know, Global Voices. And in all the countries that we're implementing the app, uh, we're doing it together with, uh, with Saf al Hor in Egypt, with Independent Media Center in Kurdistan, Iraq, uh, uh, with the Center Ibn Rushd in Morocco and with CAPJC here in Tunisia. There is one, uh, one organization missing from Tunisia here, which is actually, actually Lam al Shamal, but I couldn't, uh, am I pronouncing it right? Yeah. I couldn't practice. So uh, I, didn't, I couldn't find that one. So this is a bit of a geographical spread, but we have been a bit eager. So we have also already run an implementation in Zimbabwe. So we want to help you tell your story and tell it to different people and try to use it in a way that you think it works. Let me quickly run you through the app. I'll do it very quickly. This is the app. So this is your phone. You have two choices. Go through the lessons, click. And you'll see lessons in journalism, security, audio, photo, and video. Every category is, is built up into small lessons. Click. So you look into introduction to journalism, social media basics, reporting basics, etc., etc. Click. Every lesson contains of uh, an introduction, swipe, uh, a problem statement, swipe, background, swipe. things to remember, solutions, and small videos teaching you how you can use it, should use it, or should not use it. And to check if you really paid attention, there's a quiz. 
And if you think there are words in there that are like, what's going on here? There's a glossary. <laughs> so, you completed the lesson. Good work. So now we're going to create a story. Click. Create a story. Boom. New story. So we're going to put in a working title. And we're going to choose a medium. With the Story Maker app, you can make videos, photos, audio, and photo assets. So once you've decided upon what you want to do, you say, start my story. You can choose, however, different templates. So if you played a bit more with it, you can make profiles, breaking news, human interest stories. But let's just start with a simple template. So uh, when you're starting the template, we're asking you to think about what you're going to do. Why? Because every person that is first starting journalism, how long training he had or not, the first time he goes and reports, will go up to someone and ask, what do you think about this? And that person will start talking for 20 minutes, and it's impossible to make an interesting item about that. So editing actually already starts while you're doing the recording. So first think about the content that you're going to do. Tap start. But then also think about the interesting angle that you need to take. It's really not necessary to have one shaky medium wide shot. You know, it can be different, and we're going to do that. So we're putting a lot of information about the rules of thirds yeah. and to make interesting content. So, and uh, the templates consist of different parts. Uh, so about action, the character, more information. Right. And once you fill all these up, you can go to the order tab. So this is where the magic sauce is, people. This is really where it happens. You can take the different parts and you can put them in a different order, but you can also trim the clips. So you do the editing that you would previously do on your computer, on your phone. And then you trim it, and then it's done. The good thing is that if you make a, make a mistake, it's no problem, because the trimming is non-destructive. When you're done, you record a voiceover, and you can review whether you like it. When you're done, you go to publish. You can put a title, uh, a description, you can tag it, use GPS or a location or type your location, and you can choose two things. Either export it locally to your phone, so that you have it on your phone, or you can publish it. When you publish it, you can upload it to Flickr, YouTube, or any third-party platform. And how you can use it, you can use it straight to the internet, which was then using HTTPS. But if you feel like you want to be really anonymous, we have Tor built in. So when you do that, it's super slow, but it's super secure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes it's needed. But if you feel like in between, you can upload over VPN. So we're uploading and we're done. Thank you very much. Leo will tell you a bit more. So I will, I will tell you a little bit about what it means for a traditional journalist that I am to get confronted with Storymaker. Now, I worked in television for 15 years. And when I learned television the first time, I was a videotape editor, actually, in my early days, which is now, you know, a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I learned to operate an editing suite um, which cost a million dollars and was a room half the size of this room, full with equipment, and that was how video was produced. So when Niels came up with the initial idea to make a mobile phone, all station, publishing, and I, I said to him, you're crazy, this is never going to work, can't be done, and I was having a Blackberry at the time, and you know, I, I just looked at the way in which you make a film with Blackberry, and it's really shit quality, right? <laughs> and because I love television, I really love good stories. Um, you know, for me, it's really important. So, can you go to the next uh, slide, please? So, um, one of the great things that I think is about Story Maker is that it not only helps you to capture a single image better, but it's really a story maker. So, how does video tell a story? 
it tells a story by segmenting it into different uh, shots. And you, you cut up a scene. And one of the things that annoys me as a television producer, and I guess that many traditional media experts are thinking the same thing, if you see the mobile footage from coming out of uh, uh, Homs or Hama or Syria, and you see shaky images of people who um, see a smoking building, I want to get deeper. I want to see reactions. I want to see people who react, give interviews. I want to, I want to know more. And quite often, you know, I say that Storymaker is a potentially an app that can bring us to that new world where citizen journalists actually go deeper, not just witnessing, but actually telling us more specifics. So Storymaker says, what kind of story am I making? And it's providing different options in its, in its background on how to do that. We have new stories, of course. Can you go back, please? New stories, you have features, you have a um, you know, background documentary about drought, or you have sports, and they require different ways of telling the story. So there's profile stories like this, the news event, you know, uh, we all know about it. This is actually the uh, failure of uh, trying to pump Sandy out of the metro subway uh, in New York City. Um, and this is the fireworks in Libya. So the story maker tells you, how do I get a good shot? Um, one of the things that I always talk about when I speak to young, motivated people, like we were in Istanbul for three days before this, and we were talking to a lot of people at Gacy Park and in the, in the Taksim Square, and you see a lot of people just copying. We are telling them, you know, have a purpose with the things that you do. Think about what you want to tell in advance and cut it up. Have a purpose, have control. One of the things, you know, there's so easy tricks. If you hold your mobile phone uh, above your head all the time, you know, eventually you're going to do this, right? But if you, if you can find a higher spot and you do like this, you can be actually pretty shapeless for a long time, right? You can make better footage. And better footage get easier into the mainstream media. So if you're a citizen journalist and you want to impact on these old geezers who are not producing the truth, and I know that many of you think that the traditional media are not doing that, and I think that you know, we have to transform them, then make sure that your footage is more adaptable. The other thing is have confidence. You know? um, you're doing something that is very important, so you need to think about how to do your story and uh, go on. So one of the things that I always tell also to people who do mobile phone reporting is that the sound is often so disastrously bad. And you know, I am an experienced videotape editor. I produced news television for 15 years in the Netherlands, and I edited all the major Southeast uh, Europe crises, wars, the genocide in Rwanda. I, I know, you know, and, and one of the experiences that I have, which is something that will be shocking to you, is the image that puts all the attraction in your brain, but it's the sound that makes you love a story and get intimate. 70 to 80 percent of all the cuts that you make in television production are audio related. The images are, are very easy. You have a, good, a couple of good images, you put them together. But the audio, now, one of the things, great things about um, Storymaker is that it explains to you how to cover from wind. Has ever, ever, anyone ever done you know, have everybody ever stood at a demonstration and it's windy, you know, you come home and you sing shit, right? Because it doesn't capture the emotion. You need good audio. So Storymaker has a lot of tips about that. Of course, you have to do the hard work yourself, right? You have to practice and train. Go on. One of the other things is the natural light. Actually, I saw Niels, who's not an experienced television producer, filming right into that uh, lamp when he was filming. <laughs> 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 One cable. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, you know, and the thing is, you won't use the shot, you see. It's so important to try. Easy lessons can really make the quality of your video so much better. Yes. So how do you shoot interviews? Well, I was telling you about this. You can be much more steady. 
how many how many citizen reporters do you see like in the next uh, slide you know you have someone uh, who make notes and uh, uh, and the person and in the preparation of the interview uh, you know the interviewee is, is saying something so he has to get a pencil and, and has to scribble you know this and then and then by the time that you get the film and you have the paper and you need to do the, the, the paper you know it's so you need to prepare we're telling people, you know, the real access to quality journalism is prepared. Okay, there's also features in the story maker about stuff like close-up and medium. Television is really a very close-up kind of medium. It, the impact increases by having less wide-angle shots. Long-distance shots, wide-angle shots. Okay, sorry, not a camera. Um, yeah. So um, in the application, among the overlays, it, you know, it, it explains to you that if you know, the person that you're interviewing and you're, you're, you're it's looking like there and, and the cutter, the frame is like this, it will feel, the television viewer will feel that you know, this person is not interested in the public, right? So film it like this, etc. So very interesting things about no space, head space. I mean, I practiced with it in the last month, and I'm a non-believer, and I've got to tell you, I really love this. So how do I shoot a sequence? Okay, so there's, there's in, the, in, the, in the more advanced stages of Storymaker, you can get answers to who, where, what, how, why, and, and how to do that. It, it, turn, it learns you how to break up your scene, and it tells you another things to remember. Now, I won't go into all of that. The only thing that I will say is that I, I enjoy Storymaker. I'm wasting my time on it because you know I was in Istanbul and I was leading a conference, and I went to Taksim Square because I wanted to use Storymaker. I'm not a professional cameraman. I'll warn you, but I made on Storymaker the following clip. Uh, this is before the uh, Taksim Square was evicted. And this is actually um, a vigil, a vigil for the people that were killed or wounded. Store. Look for Storybaker. There's a winner there. People have downloaded it. That's great. 
Now, thank you so much for your attention. Do you have any questions or shall we just go on? I see a question there. That was a very short and rude answer, but it boils. So BlackBerry and Android are not based on open source software. Uh, that means that we do not know what happens inside the phone. Maybe, or actually we can now say probably, someone is looking at what you're doing. And we want to make sure that that's not happening. Furthermore, uh, it's possible to install software from another source on the Android phone. With Apple, you have to go through the, uh, through the App Store. And if they want to refuse it, they'll just refuse it. And we do not want to put a lot of hard work and time of a community in something that one big American company says is not, not relevant. Yes, but we'll have to see if more than 10 people will have it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question here, Niels. Hi, um, thank you. Um, I was just wondering if you tested the, the application in um, sort of standard um, Middle East, uh, North Africa, internet conditions and cell phone conditions because I tried to download it right now. It was 26 megs. I was surprised, but then now I understand why it's so big. Well, you, you ain't seen nothing yet because the app itself is 26 megs. If you want to have, if, if you'll have to do the lessons with all the videos and audios, you'll have to download 200 megs more. It's a lot, I know. So um, we've been thinking of, that's why we didn't package the lessons in it. So perhaps you can go to a restaurant, to a hotel or stand next to an embassy. And when you have chance, you download, the, you, you download the lessons on your device. And when it's done, you can also Bluetooth the app to your friend's mobile phone and then share it. So that's a way to come across it. But indeed, so we needed to find a balance. But if you want to have a full editor and have all that functionality, you have to do it. So another question that will come up is, on what phones does it work? So uh, that is a r another reason why we didn't chose for the iPhone because we wanted it to be available for a lot of people. So we developed the app for devices of a price point of 200 US dollars. So that's, I know that's not really cheap. There are cheaper phones, but it was not possible to do editing and proper shooting on those. So right now we're aiming at $200 device. Anyone else? GitHub, everything. Download it, edit it, commit, or fork it. Whatever you want. What about you? You had a question? No, not really. Okay. Leon. Oh, sorry. So if I understand well, you, you, you're trying to distribute the, the sources of news. But uh, at the end, you suggested uh, uh, uploading the, the content to Facebook and uh, LinkedIn and all the centralized uh, places, but won't you go into... Because even though I would like to have a completely distributed net where we're all hosting all our data, that's not the reality right now. And although we're pretty idealis idealistic in developing this, but we also know that right now we need to get the information out to a lot of people. And that will not happen if we upload it to Diaspora. So even though there is an option to download it to your server or another server, you can choose where you want to, up to upload it to, but the default is YouTube. Well, I, I mean, I think that you know, for us it was important to provide choice and not to link the app to a fixed distributor, etc. So we hope, and as an organization, we actually support the creation of much more platforms throughout the Arab world that can function as uh, aggregators for content. And you see that happening now. Now, that is available and possible within the features of StoryMaker to, you know, you can choose to upload to a designated uh, 
um, contributor. I mean, in the end of the day, it is even possible to start a citizen journalism news agency built like this. Um, but of course, we didn't want to prescribe what everybody's going to do with it. We want to see what people want to do with it and then assist in the further perfection of it. That's why it's a process. Well, you, don't, you, you should say not, not process, but? Uh, well, uh, I don't have um, a question, but uh, sort of a, a comment and, uh, or a remark. Uh, well, now, I mean, uh, this, uh, this app is not just about uh, uh, delivering a story. I think uh, with time, it's going to modify journalism how people report uh, stories. So uh, I think uh, with time, if, I mean, if, uh, if it becomes more uh, accessible to m uh, a bigger number of people, I think uh, it's going to modify and change uh, how journalism functions. So, yeah. yeah, let's hope so. And to do that, so we have a lot of different ideas of how this app should go forward, like uh, increasing, uh, doing more encryption on the phone, but also uh, providing the functionality of blurring out faces. Actually, we're, uh, we're expecting to integrate that next month, but we also want to integrate uh, verification methods so that you can, uh, uh, that the, the GPS location and the network location is encoded into the video so that you can really use it as proof. But for now, we're focusing on making the app completely stable, which it's not, on all phones, all devices, so that's why we really need people testing it. And the way we want to develop it too, we need cues from people like you. So that's why we're training with these training centers in these areas, because we want to hear from people, how do you use it, how do you improve? And that's the only way we can go forward. Was there questions there? Or? Ah. Thanks. Uh, well, my question is, uh, so far, I, as, I, as far as I understood, it's just the application to help people produce better videos. Sure. But will there be a, like a sort of platform or website where we can find all the videos made thanks to this application? Yes. All right. Uh, and well, well, would, it, well, oh, another what? question, maybe. <laughs> well, it, would it be possible for non-users of this application to send their videos to this platform? Maybe. Thanks. Yes, so um, there is the website storymaker.cc and um, we are not hosting any content that people make with the app. So people choose their uh, platform and then the default setting is that it gets cross-posted to storymaker.cc. So that's where you can see it, but if you do not want it, you can get that setting out of the way by just simply going to uh, to settings. Your second question was? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, here it is. Yeah, so then you log in and you upload. That's it, easy as that. So that's definitely possible. Oh, well, I have a question. I mean, uh, this app is used with, uh, with a smartphone. I mean, you shoot and then you, you modify, I mean, like in 10 seconds, maybe, I mean, uh, uh, right then. Uh, but then, uh, uh, are there any plans to uh, make these um, functions available um, after you shoot? I mean, you have those videos uh, uh, on your PC, and then you log, uh, you log in to the website, and you upload, and then you modify them. I don't know. Yeah, possible. So when you uh, 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 remember that there were two options, like export and publish. So when you only press export, then you export it locally and you can share it over uh, direct Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or you can just you put your cable in your PC and then you can edit it there. Ah, yeah, so, uh, so interesting question. We have been thinking about that a lot, but what you would then need is massive bandwidth and it already exists. So there are editors that work online, but because you have to upload everything, uh, then uh, the rendering needs to go via your cable. If you want to do that, you practically need like a uh, dedicated one megabit symmetrically, so both up and down. And well, I don't even have that at home in the Netherlands, right? 
right? So I mean, the, the application is designed to try and get more content produced by rural areas in Zimbabwe by people in Upper Egypt who have not maybe participated so much in whatever happened in, in Cairo and Port Said and Alexandria. So, you know, what we're trying to do, and that is an aim of our organization, to give more people the opportunity to participate in the debates. And so, there's limitations to the thing. You know, accessibility. accessibility and getting more stories. I mean, the, the, the international news media, because of the enormous financial pressures, are cutting down on correspondence, are cutting down on regional bureaus. So the content is getting less and less diverse. I mean, this is a global trend. So citizen journalists, to a certain extent, uh, fill this vacuum, um, but they are more, more urbanized at this moment. So if you want to know what rural women uh, in Zimbabwe may decide to still vote for Mugabe, you know, or try to understand what is going on there, you know, you need these kind of people, and that's exactly you know, we did a training with, um, with women in uh, rural Zimbabwe, and they're using it, they're uploading stories. I mean, it's great. So we can talk about the app for many more hours, and probably we will, but just ask us during the conference or afterwards, and right now, we can let you go. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so remember, um, I have actually my communication director, who is very good, is actually telling me that you know, I, I have a number of papers, there's some information for you there. But um, remember the award. Until the 31st of December, if you upload a story, you get a, you get a chance to win a thousand euros. That's a new high-end smartphone plus credit. So, use it. And then there's another thousand euro for anyone who's so keen and critical that he's going to provide us with a bug report that allows us to increase the quality of the application. Thank you very much. And just for your information, the project with Cap JC to train people in Tunis is not starting until after Ramadan, so it will be the second part of the year in Tunis. So talk to Huda if you want to be part of that and see if you can. <laughs>